Welcome to another episode of So You Think You Know Westerville. Today I'm standing behind what is probably a familiar building to many of you. Uh, as the story goes, Henry Corbin and his wife Mary Polexeny opened a saloon here in 1875. Although he was allowed to by state law, Corbin had actually picked a really bad time to do this. The temperance movement was picking up momentum across the state and a lot of Westerville residents, religious leaders, and educators uh, believed that saloons were dens of vice and iniquity. They gathered outside of Corbin's saloon to sing and pray and exhort him to shut his doors. Uh, somebody egged his saloon and someone broke in and bored holes in all of the whiskey barrels. It culminated in a series of explosions that actually blew the roof off of the building. Accusations flew back and forth, but nobody was ever able to definitively prove just who the culprit was. When Corbin tried to open another saloon on State Street four years later, the same exact thing happened. The Whiskey Wars, as we refer to this series of unfortunate events, are an important part of Westerville's history and helped cement the town's uh, reputation as being a dry town. Up until recently, we've interpreted the Whiskey Wars as a uh, unique event, one that demonstrated Westerville's dry commitment. But last fall, we discovered some newspaper articles that showed us that the way we've traditionally thought about the Whiskey Wars hasn't been quite right. Just three months after the explosions at Henry Corbin's second saloon in 1879, there were two loud blasts in Dublin, a town about 15 miles from here. Just days before Christmas, a saloon and a tavern there had blown up. In March 1880, it happened again. When asked uh, who he thought did it, one of the owners of these saloons said, I think I've got them. There's a ring, a Ku Klux, a law and order party. Now the KKK didn't really have a presence in Ohio until the 1920s. Uh, and although it is true that um, a lot of the same people supported both the KKK and the temperance movement, we don't have any solid evidence to suggest that the KKK, um, as we think of the group today, was actually involved in the Dublin saloon explosions. The owner likely used the term Ku Klux to describe a, vigil a vigilante group intent on taking matters into their own hands. People in Dublin would have heard about the Westerville saloon bombings and an individual or a group of them probably just decided to mirror it in their own community. The Westerville Whiskey Wars may not be as unique as we originally thought, but that doesn't mean that they're any less important. In fact, the fact that this was happening in other places across the country means that the saloon bombings here are actually probably even more significant than we realized. In light of our new knowledge, particularly the Dublin saloons, we can see how the Westerville Whiskey Wars help us tell a broader story about how Westerville helped shape American history. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for another episode of So You Think You Know Westerville.